All right, let's take a look at that. So this is going to be the first lap hot lap. Pocono's just too long to make second lap work. Your tires are going to be hot anyways. No need to worry about it. So going into turn three here, we're going to do this technique where you would think at first, oh, I want to just drive along the top. But the thing about driving on the top is one, there's not quite as much grip up here because you're having to turn your wheel a little bit more just to stay up there. And then also your angle off the corner is less favorable so you don't get to go full throttle as early. So instead, I like to start high and then make an apex about two lanes down and then come back up. Just trying to get my steering wheel as straight as possible as early as possible and then get to full throttle without sliding the rears. This is such a momentum-based track, you cannot slide the rears loose. So you just gotta drive the car as tight as possible so that that doesn't happen. So anyways, we're able to keep it off the wall, keep the momentum up. Now, here's something very interesting here, is that we are driving about a lane off the wall because these straightaways are so long, the momentum is so important that wall arrow is actually coming into effect. So you're gonna lose multiple hundredths if you just stay by the wall and drive down as if you were just a normal driving. But if you're staying off the wall a little bit, then you don't get that effect and you get to save a couple hundredths. So that's pretty nice. So I'm doing that for just the entire straightaway. And then I come back uh, right as the cone start for turn one. And then for turn one, after uh, the first cone, I start to turn in. There's two ways you can approach this in the truck. You can go all the way to the bottom if you really want, or you can kind of go to the second groove. And depending on what you do, if you go to the bottom, you gotta prioritize uh, early off throttle, early on throttle, so that you carry as much momentum as possible. And then if you're on the second line, you really just wanna prioritize getting as much rotation as possible. So I chose this time to kind of go to this second line. Actually, sorry, no, I cut down. So I made a late apex in one. So there's a lot, when the truck, there's a lot of lines that work because of how the car handles. So really, you just kind of got to roll with the punches with how you enter the corner. So you see, I start dragging the brake down the hill really early. And then I pick up the throttle. This is very important. You pick up the throttle before the apex of the corner because these straightaways are long. We need momentum. So we got to do whatever's possible to get it on the throttle at the earliest possible moment. So we do that by getting an early entry and then getting on throttle before the apex. And you see I'm able to go full throttle extremely early. Now you're going to think, wow, this is a really bad angle. You're like going to hit the wall, right? Well, this car has enough natural looseness in it so that I can make a straight line, just slide up off the corner, not have to worry about it too much. Maybe use a little bit of wheel to guide it, but this is hot lap, so we don't care about that. And that's how we carry momentum. If we're sliding our rear tires to make exit of the corner, that is not carrying momentum. So I'm doing whatever is possible to get my rear tire engaged on the exit of this corner. And if that includes sliding up the track like so, so be it. It's actually pretty easy to keep off the wall because this truck is pretty responsive to the steering wheel at this point of the corner. All right, so very good. We're able to keep that off the wall. Same thing with the wall arrow. Now turning into turn two here, I like to do just a late apex wide entry turn two. I do a little tiny brake tap as I'm coming down the hill. Tiny brake tap and then just straight back on the throttle. Going straight from the brake tap to the throttle is just extremely important. So you go brake tap back into the gas. And what that does is it allows the car to keep its rotation while being able to get that quick burst of angle that you were looking for. And I think I could have taken that a little more aggressive personally. I think I was a little lethargic with getting off the gas. Definitely could have been a little more proactive with it, but it was fine. You see, I lost a bit on entry. Gained some of it back on exit. It's probably a net zero, but I probably could have done a little better. Uh, but that's pretty good. And then turn three very interesting corner so you have two options you can go super wide arc and try to make a really big apex because of how long this corner is or you can do what i do get down early quickly kind of meet the curb at the bottom and then just drive straight up the track because of how wide the corner is and because i'm showing it i recommend the second way so we get to the bottom early get to the full throttle like extremely early you're like how the hell is this gonna work well just watch it, my rear is rotating this entire way, 
So I'm just using the car's natural looseness to just make the corner without me even can, like thinking about turning. Like I'm just trying to get the car to not spin out and the car on its own is like, all right, well, I'll just rotate the car for you then. So we're sliding off the old line, what seems to be extremely early, but once again, momentum-based track, we are doing whatever is possible to get on the throttle at the earliest possible moment. So if your line feels weird, looks weird, but you're getting on the throttle earlier, that's probably the correct answer at Pocono. And then we carry a good amount of speed to the finish here and we have a good lap. All right, now let's go talk about long run. All right, now let's take a look a bit of the long run here. So we're gonna come to our lap. And honestly, the lines aren't that much different than the uh, qualifying lap. It's just kind of how you approach it. That's gonna be a little different. So the draft is gonna be really strong in this race. You're not gonna be able to shake people off just by driving away from them unless they make some bad mistake or they get side by side with someone else. So if you're just kind of in line waiting for tires to wear off, just really focus on getting to the bottom, getting those early entries and just driving the car straight up the hill off the corner, especially in one here. Because what we wanna do is minimize how much steering wheel we're using and kind of using the super steep banks and the rotation of the car to drive back up the hill saves a lot of right front tire. I like to use a little tiny brake tap here. You can definitely push harder in two. I think how hard you push in two should just depend on what situation you feel like you're in. If you think that you can get somebody's draft and turn off a of turn two, then there's no real reason to push it super hard and risk hitting the wall. Although turn two isn't as hard in the trucks as it is in some other uh, other cars. So three and four is really okay, almost the exact same line nine, as what I did in the qualifying lap. So we'll go over another lap here. So turn one, I like to drive just a little bit, not as deep as the fall run, use a little bit of brake drag and then partial throttle then hold that until I can start unloading the steering wheel. Very important, you do not want to have to turn back to the left at all uh, once you get back on the throttle or else you're going to be burning the right front tire off. Turn two here, I like to apex either a little bit late or right on the apex. A little bit of a brake tap to set. You can definitely push that harder, but the harder you push, the tighter the timing, so it's up to you. Then I just like to Half throttle, get down to the bottom here, a little bit of brake drive and get straight back onto the throttle and use the car's rotation just to drive back straight up the track like this and uses the right rear to get off the corner and it's a pretty good run. So no shifting shenanigans here that I believe. We'll do one more lap here to go over one more time. But so the first corner here once again. Early entry. Partial throttle, hold that until you start unloading the wheel. And once you unload the wheel, go full throttle and just drive it straight up to the wall. If you have to use a tiny bit of extra wheel to keep it off the wall, go ahead. But it's kind of a last resort type deal. Okay, turn two, I'm gonna try to push a little harder and see how it goes. Oh, you see, I pushed it harder and I couldn't get to the bottom. So really, the harder you push, the more likely it is you make a mistake. So don't worry about turn two too much. Turn three. Half throttle to the bottom, get all the way down there on the curb, and then just go full throttle as early as possible because the back end will start coming around on you, and then you can use that as a rotation to get off the corner. All right, very good. So those are a few long run style laps at Pocono. I don't foresee the line changing any one bit uh, because the car isn't that fast, it's not that powerful, so the points are gonna be more or less the same. Maybe one you back up a little bit more. So 97, 97, so we we're wearing our tires evenly, and that's what we're looking for in a run like this. And then just use the draft to your advantage. If you can give up a little bit in a corner to save some tire, and then draft back up to somebody, that's ideal. And uh, you can play those swervy games on the front stretch to try to break the toe, but that's, that's always a fun game in itself. All right, thank you all for watching. Hope you have a wonderful day, and I hope to see you all on the track.